you want to know about Paradise, Paradise with a Dashboard Light was written by Jim Steinman as everything else on the album was and it <clears throat> that came about when we played Carnegie Hall uh, about three years ago before uh, we ever had a record deal and uh, I took Jimmy home in a rent a car and I let him out at his house and I said Jimmy write a duet for the record he says what I said write a duet for the record he goes well how about a uh, guy and a girl in the back seat of a car I said sounds great write it about an hour and a half later, he'd come up with the first half and told me what the rest of it was. That was one of his quick songs. Um, Can you give us a little background into how uh, you became successful in the United States over the last few years? <laughs> a little background? Well, it was an overnight success after 12 years, basically, is what's going on. And it really was an overnight success. People go, well, it wasn't really an overnight, you know, when you ask people, well, how does it feel to be an overnight success? And they go, well, I wasn't an overnight success. It took me 15 years, you know? Well. Uh, Basically, I'm an overnight success. I just laid a large foundation in a big crater for about 12 years, but it happened overnight and it happened like that. And uh, if you want to be called successful, I don't know what successful is either. To me uh, and to Jimmy, we were successful when we finished the record. I mean, that was the major triumph because it took us five years to even get to the point of finishing the record. People uh, saying to me, oh, I think you're great, but who's this weird guy with you that's writing all these strange songs? And I'm going, he's one of the best songwriters in America, and you're a jerk for not realizing it, you know? And uh, that's, you know, and they kept going, well, if you get rid of him, we'll sign you, you know? And I kept going, well, I'm not getting rid of him, and I'm not going to sign with you, and stuff like that. Because I believed in what we were doing. I believed in Jimmy. I still do. I think Jimmy is, uh, I think maybe now, I've been saying he's one of the, like, top five songwriters. I really honestly believe, at this point in time, that he is probably the best songwriter, uh, contemporary songwriter there is. Carla DeVita, how did she fit into the act? How did you Oh, first well, Carla. Yeah. I saw Carla about uh, three years ago in a band called Orchestra Luna. And I saw her at CBGB's here in New York. And um, I thought she was unbelievable. I thought she was the best one in the band, actually. And so it came around. We were getting ready to go out on tour. And I went to Jimmy and I said, uh, Jim, I want to go with Carla. He goes, well, she's not blonde, <laughs> you know, because Jimmy's visions of every woman in the song was a blonde. And I said, it doesn't make any difference, Jim. I said, just because it's your visions, no one else has your visions except you. Do you have any plans to be going specifically to oh, Holland? Oh, you bet. To Holland. Yeah, we tried when? to get there all last year, you know, and nobody things. would book us. Nobody would book us. We were sitting in Germany trying to get into Amsterdam, and they're looking at us like, well, where are you going to play? You know, and I don't uh, think you'll have any problem filming. No, I don't think so now since we got about 97 yeah. promoters calling now going, can he come to Holland next week? You know, uh, we want, we're dying to go. Yeah. So next year we're going to do about five months and we'll probably do, you know, three or four dates in Holland, maybe two, three. I don't know how big Holland is. How big are you, Holland? <laughs> you know?